Um, mahalo for coming. I, I wasn't sure if it was going to be an audience today because we get so many good things happening. Yeah. Um, mahalo to Ahakane for inviting me to come down and talk story a little bit about Hakukole. First, before I get started, you know, I'm not an expert on this subject. It's, it's a subject that I've been kind of peely to over the past probably decade. Um, and I kind of stumbled upon this um, after looking at one of, um, one of the chants from the Maui Chants book that was published back probably in 1992 or 1993. And there was one particular chant that I kept looking at and going, you know what, this, this, this imagery just, just doesn't seem quite what I'm accustomed to. Yeah? And so after some investigation, realized that there was this whole genre of mele called hakukole. And so basically, you know, I'm, I'm a primer. You know, consider this a primer class. Um, and not even a class, because um, basically what I've done is I've hunted through different um, sources to look for specific examples of the hakukole tradition. Yeah, so take plenty of notes. What I suggest is if you feel like write them down, write them down. Um, if you want this PowerPoint presentation, give me your email and I'll send it to you, okay? Um, <clears throat> I, I highly recommend, especially for those of you who olelo, Hawaii, to look at these um, and memorize them, <laughs> like how you would memorize Oli. Because to have this in your arsenal, yeah, is always a good thing. Even if somebody else might not understand what you're saying, you understand, yeah. And there's mana in that, yeah, kind of thing. So, <clears throat> and at any point, you know, hapailima, peahilima, if you have questions, Okay. Mm. <laughs> Oi, kama kape huolalo. Ei a to ula he ho pe pono. Na na ela e a kunele lo a oe. No hi na ne ila uli ko o hi a. O se o hola uki fu a isalito. Pili ha iloko ananea itanani Ma e ma e a ue no hone iye Oh yala Yeah, so this is one example. This was, this was the one that actually got me started. And this is from the Kuluwai Maka collection. Yeah. And the story that goes with this, there's a little small footnotes that go with this, <clears throat> is that there, the story goes that there were two women who were in love with the same person. One older and one younger. And this chant comes from the younger one to the older rival. Yeah. And so, um, interestingly, she calls, she gives her a, a, an inoa kapa kapa, yeah, kapihi nui. And pihi, is a uh, Hawaiian English, Hawaiian slash English of fish. And so she's renaming her rival, you big fish. Yeah? So, yeah, in this case, it's like pay attention. Yeah? Listen to me. Yeah? Um, the story goes on to say that their lover was uh, a sailor, yeah, who oftentimes came in. Um, to the, the harbor. And so in this particular line, or in this verse, she says, 
Take heed, O be big fish, floating about at the harbor's entrance. Yeah, so the imagery of that is interesting because what floats at the harbor, harbor's entrance? Trash, feces, foam, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so right away she sets the stage, yeah, to her irritation at that lady. Oh, yeah. You're appropriate as a lamppost, standing guardian on the, war on the wharf. Passing by, hands grasp, giving life to your swollen eye below. Ew. Yeah, that's kind of self-explanatory. And now, in this part of the melee, she now talks about herself. And here is mine. Yeah, I am going to be a good successor for you, which will take away all, leaving you bereft. For Hina is this abundance of buds, fringe of the tea emerging in new shoots. So we think that either she's from Molokai or her lover's from Molokai, one of the two. Yeah, Lots of um, clues in this. And others will be drawn in and revel in me and be made immaculate by my presence. Rawr. Yeah, That's an interesting style of poetry. You know, we're so accustomed, especially those of us who are poehula and those of us who are meoli, yeah, we're, we're accustomed to a certain kind of imagery. Yeah, and normally it's positive, it's honorific, um, but in this case, there's a whole fabric of poetry that is exactly the opposite. And the beauty of that is that the composition skills that are used for the positive stuff and all the love stuff and the honorific stuff is the same skill and kauna that is used for hakukole action. Okay, hakukole, chants, songs, and sayings of ridicule. Okay, so just to start from the beginning, hakukole, it means to defame, to ridicule as in figurative language and chant, or you can be the mea hakukole. Yeah, you can be the hakukole-er, so to speak. Um, hakukole chants and sayings could be pre-composed or spontaneous. The important thing, like with any mele, that it has to be delivered in a public forum. Yeah, it has to go from the mouth, from the waha, to the pepeyao of the listeners. Whether that listener is your object of scorn, or better yet, if the object of scorn is there, and get audience all around, yeah? Because that delivers the highest psychological impact of damage, <laughs> okay? That's really what it is. That's what a hakukole does. It damages the person psychologically, yeah? Hakukole is an often overlooked facet of oratory. It embodies a broad network of poetry that reflects one part of the entire cultural fabric, negative emotion, yeah? We forget, you know, how do our, how did our kupuna, pre-contact especially, yeah, kupuna deal with irritation? How did they deal with anger? You know, how did they deal with infidelity? Yeah, and hakukole is one of those avenues. So you can find hakukole in mele, um, in geographical epithets, in vocabulary, uh, nonverbal communication, and we'll talk a little bit about that, um, as well as Lack of better word, you know, I, I'm not sure about olelo no eau, but I put them up there anyway because that's what we kind of are accustomed to. Yeah. There are different kinds of ridiculing chants. There's the kuamuamu, there's insulting or grumbling. You have hooki ekie, oftentimes you find this in war. Yeah. Uh, nema nema, criticizing. Hoole, yeah, refusal to a request. And that's oftentimes done in a hakukole fashion. Um, in kaka olelo, verbal sparring. Now the verbal sparring is, I think, just another level above hakukole. I think that's just my opinion, because I think when you kaka olelo, it's it's much more spontaneous than hakukole is. According to um, kui, <clears throat> um, people could be hired out. Hakumele could be hired out as verbal assassins. Yeah. You could hire out a hakumele to compose a hakukole for somebody that you know like. Yeah, and so that's, I think that's the difference with kaka olelo. I think kaka olelo is much more on your toes kind of action. 
Uh, Hakukole permeated every aspect of our society, eh? from ali'i to kawa, young and old, men and women, and geographic location. We're going to touch upon all of these um, as we move along our presentation today. And for those of us who are not quite ma'a with poetry, yeah, the chants and sayings often relay important personal feelings in indirect poetic terms, right? So most of the time, most of the stuff that we know, talk about love, talk about sex, praises an ali'i or place, uh, talks about the pride of coming from an area, yeah, that's ancestral identification or and, and uh, uh, land identification. Um, there are mele to give thanks, you know, and there are mele that, that, that also um, expresses fear. But in this case, what we're looking at is, is these emotions, anger, irritation, and jealousy. And again, for those of us who are familiar with the, the familiar subject within Kauna, yeah? So again, love, honorifics, ancestral, and place identification. And oftentimes, we utilize specific kinds of imagery, elementals, rains, yeah? Winds, ocean, uh, certain kinds of elements that are unique to a specific area to help identify where that mele is from. Um, certain kinds of plants and animals are used in mele that we already know. Yeah, Eevee, different kinds of birds, you know, all those kinds. Um, senses are also used, and that's kind of a familiar thing. What you smell, what you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you touch. Yeah. But in Hakukole, again, it's the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. So the things that we talk about, or the things that you read, or study, or hear, is about laziness. Yeah. Personal hygiene, if that person stink. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, skin color often comes into play. Uh, stupidity, race, shallowness, somebody who's not, you know, the elevator and go all the way up to the top. Mm. Um, speaking out of turn, yeah, or, 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 or breaking some sort of social rule, yeah. Um, talking too much. Somebody who is a little bit maneo or a lot maneo, yeah, promiscuity, whether it's real or imagined, it doesn't matter, yeah. These are just a, a small example of some of the animals that we find in poetry for Hakukole, yeah. So, for instance, you have the muhe'e, and the muhe'e is what is that in English? Squid. Squid, yeah. Cuttlefish. Yeah, cuttlefish, cuttlefish. cuttlefish, yeah. The cuttlefish is the one that, that changed color. Yeah, the thing changed color, and it's not real big, yeah. I think they're only about like this big, and they, they kind of move, that, move forward, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the muhe'e is known for changing its colors. That's its characteristics. It also hypnotizes its prey. So it'll hover in front of its prey, and it'll start to like undulate, yeah, and change its colors, and it really does hypnotize its prey. And so, so the, whatever it is they're going to eat, one fish or whatever, the thing kind of stop and go, whoa. And then what happens is the thing just grab them and eat them. Yeah. And so the muhe'e in this thought process is somebody who's two-faced. Yeah. The muhe'e can also swim back and forth, forwards and backwards. Yeah. And so when you call somebody a muhe'e, that means they're two-faced that they, ha they show you one side of them, certain colors, but actually their colors are something else. Yeah, the manakuke, yeah, and even though we'll, we see some, some post-contact uh, animals, yeah, our kupuna always, always incorporated new things that they saw. Yeah, so the mongoose, yeah, the mongoose is known for stealing chicken eggs. Yeah, and so, I have an example of a song for the manakuke for you to look at. The pua'a oftentimes is mentioned in hakukole, especially when it comes to sex, and especially when it comes to men. Yeah? Oversexed. The moa is much more female in the hakukole that I found. The nayo, yeah, the pinworm. Yeah, that's the worms that are found in your, uh, in your okole. Yeah. Rats, yole, goes without saying, thievery. Yeah. The eva, the eva bird, 
Yeah, the, I think, what is that in English? Frigate. Frigate, yeah. Because oftentimes they steal. They steal, what they do is they harass other birds that have a mid-flight, they'll harass another bird that has fish in its mouth, and it'll harass it in mid-air until the other bird drops the fish, and then they go down and scoop them. And so oftentimes in melee, an eva is a male who steals somebody else's lover. Yeah. Elelu, cockroach. Yeah, and that's usually associated with um, foreigners. Yeah, calling them elelukes. Yeah. Popoki, cats. And we'll, we'll take a look at one of the hakukole sayings for them, for the popoki later. Uh, he'e, yeah, as in waha he'e. Oh, uh, waha he'e, yeah, being a liar, slippery, slimy, yeah, all that kind. So these are just some. There are more, but these are the ones that, that you see frequently in hakukole. Okay, so here's a snippet of a mele, and actually it was recorded by Auntie Vicky E. Rodriguez on her mele, on her album, Na Mele Ohana. Yeah, and the story goes that there was a young woman who moved from one place to this particular area, and, all, and she was very beautiful. And all the women of that area hated her because she was so beautiful. So they created, they called her the chicken stealing mongoose. Yeah, and I think go kaulana mai nei o kamai li kaiole manakuke aihue moa heiole ma amau no ke ia ika aihue ika. Moakeiki. Yeah, pleasant sound. Yeah, and that's the other thing about hakukole, is that on the surface it sounds pleasant. It can. Yeah, but it's the jabbing of the words underneath that. So you you play the song and you smile and you sing. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of the cutting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, ch check it out. Check out that particular melee on her um, album. Okay, before we get into uh, some hakukole stuff, I wanted to talk a little bit about nonverbal insults because that's what hakukole is. Hakukole is insulting somebody. Yeah. And some of these we know already, some of these we might not know. And again, this doesn't encompass all of it, this just encompasses the ones that I like. Yeah. So, aha aha, yeah, to sit with your back stiff and upright with a haughty attitude and to stand with your hands on hips. Yeah. It's one of those things that I was taught growing up, you never stand around like this. Yeah, because you get licking. Yeah. So that we call that aha aha. Kile kile kamaka. Yeah, pulling down the eyelid in contempt. And I know a lot of us still do this. Eyakao, kole kole kamaka. Yeah, this is for you, a red eye. Now, when we used this in our family when I was growing up, oftentimes it was like when, <clears throat> um, if I was looking, if I was bothering my grandma about something, like, Grandma, where do things stay? Grandma, where do things stay? She's like, here, 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 it's right here. Like that. You know? Anybody used that before? Kind. So trying to think of the contexts of which I remember, you know, utilizing some of these things has been a challenge because, you know, I know this, but when you actually got to think about it, you got to go, oh, yeah, when, when, when did I use that last? Yeah. So, kile kile kamaka. Ope akua, yeah, to cross and twist the hands behind the back. Mmm, no good. Consider the curse of bad luck to anyone who is beginning a new venture. Yeah, so we call it ope akua. Ka kepa kepa, to cross the hands high in front with the hands on the shoulders. I think it's this. Yeah, it's not very welcoming. Ma'awe, ho'o ma'awe, to mock quietly or to mimic speech in a nasty, annoying way. Yeah, we do that, yeah. You know, when somebody tell you, hey, go get the stuff over there, and you go, you need the stuff over there. <laughs> yeah, that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it has to be quiet, it's under your breath. 
Yeah, it's not loud. Yeah, there's another word for that. This is the one. Ho'oma aka aka, to cause laughter publicly by aping somebody's speech or mannerisms. Yeah, that's when you actually do it in front of the person, loud, so everybody can see. Yeah, so that's ho'oma aka aka. To make laugh. Po heo, heo heo, hua hua. It's a vulgar gesture, eyakao ka heo heo, so much for you, a penis, a knob, you're worthless. Yeah, and that's this. Yeah, you put your thumb over here between these two, and you twist. Yeah. So interesting, um, that particular word, poheo, because we hear it in other places. Yeah. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, when you, when you look at your pohakukui poi, pohakukui ai, what is the top of that called? The poheo. Yeah, because that's what it looked like. It looks like a ding ding. Yeah. And the movement of that is also very male, yeah. That papakuiai is female, yeah. And so you have this reclining action, you have this takain action, <laughs> and from that union, you get food. You have ai, yeah. And the other word for intercourse is ai. Yeah, so it's all kind of, to me, it's all kind of interrelated, kind of. Yeah. Panau, yeah, ho panau. It's a rude cursing gesture symbolic of a pulsating up and down motion of a penis. And from what I can gather, it's kind of like, you know, when you tell somebody up yours, up yours like this. Yeah. Up and down. Poho, poho, poho. Various forms of showing contempt by sticking out the buttocks or bending over and spreading your cheeks. Yeah. And I'm not sure about other cultures, but, you know, when, when, when I was young um, and we would, like, have arguments with the neighbor's kids and stuff like that, and oftentimes we would do one of those with shaw ass, <laughs> like that, as we were running away, or if, if they hit us, try to hit us, and they miss, and we're like, ha, 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 yeah. So I'm not sure if that's Hawaiian or not, but I know that we did that growing up. Kuaki'i, to stand with the hands on the hips or arms folded, Signifies superiority over others, or that one will not help with the task at hand. Yeah, we know somebody. We know people like that. Makalole, yeah, to the eyelid turned inside out, exposing the underside of the lid. Yeah, it's insulting to do that because it has kawa connotations. Yeah, they would. Uh, I think one of the things that our kupuna did was to identify kawa or to torture them. I don't know. Yeah, they would. Um, turn the eyelids inside out and then um, tattoo the inside of the eyelid. Yeah, kind of thing. Anybody did this before? Anybody got scared when their aunties or uncles did them? Yeah, when they flip, when they flip, when they flip the eyelid. My uncle guys, whenever, whenever we, were, we used to act up, they would do that and it would stop. Yeah, so I'm not sure if they knew what this was or what the connotations were, but they knew that it worked on us. Yeah, to make us stop doing whatever we was doing. Is that makalole? Panapo'o, we know this. Yeah, to tap, rap, hit, or push somebody's head or forehead. Mm, no can. No good. <clears throat> okay, let's just get started. Um, some of these, of course, uh, I couldn't find images for because some of them you just, you, you don't want to see images of that. Okay, so... Okole ka mano, yeah? Salmon anus. Yeah, this is a term that was used for white people who got sunburn. Yeah, okole ka mano. Keike kula na halewili, a oheme ahana oloko. A fine looking mill, but no machinery inside. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty, but that's about it. Yeah. All facade. Na ni ka ike akahe i nawahi leho li'i li'i. Yeah. Wonderful how the octopus notices the little cowries. Any ideas? Hmm? 
Kari's. Any ideas? Hmm? Yeah, Leho. Leho is Kari. Yeah, it's the, it's the what, what kind of shell that? The red one, the brown one. Yeah. That one? The Kari, yeah, that kind. Yeah, most people never see the animal. Yeah. Okay, this was said in disgust of a man who was older who constantly looks at younger women. Yeah. And the other thing about hakukole is that, you know, there's lots of sarcasm. Yeah, our kupuna were very sarcastic. And so this is like, you know, when you look at it like this, it doesn't seem like anything, but they're being sarcastic about it. Oh, good, nice. How that guy look over there? Did he like that, that young thing? Yeah. <clears throat> Ihu ho keo. Gord knows. What you think? I'm gonna try to tap you guys. Hmm? Mm -mm. Somebody who thinks too highly of themselves. Yeah. And so, like the gourd, when you throw when you throw the ipu onto the surface of the water, the thing float. Yeah. And so their nose constantly floats up like this, and they have to look down at you. Yeah, that's the ihu <clears> hokeo. <throat> I kani no kapahu, i ka olohaka o loko. Yeah, it's the empty space inside that gives the drum its sound. Hmm, what do you think? <coughs> Kinda? Yeah. It's almost like this, you know, some, uh, I've seen shirts like this with, that says, um, I hear you, uh, I see your lips moving, but all I hear is wah, wah, wah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and so this is kind of is like that, somebody who's loud and boisterous, but not very smart inside, yeah. No kai pa pa upa, perhaps from low tide. Yes, shallow. Yeah, somebody who's not very deep, but shallow. Yeah, no kai pa pa upa. Hey, pupala ole. Yeah, a calabash without a dab of poi in it. Yeah, it's kind of self explanatory. We get them, yeah? Okay. Hey, pupala ole. Hema uka uka hoi heva. Some people might know this, especially if you sing mele, that have this phrase. It's quite quite famous. Yeah, unskilled at paddling. Eh? Anybody know? <laughs> hmm? Not good at sex. Bad at sex. <laughs> Yeah, they also, they also, they also, um, they, there's an, one that's um, about surfing, same thing, yeah. And it takes some skill to paddle a canoe, yeah. And so same th thought process with making love, yeah. You got to have skill, yeah. And if you don't have skills, then just do it yourself. <laughs> that's... Better. That's that is frustrating. <laughs> yeah, when somebody don't know what they're doing. Hey, ho olua pi kao. There should be an okina um, between the a and the o. Yeah, food that has to be recooked. Hmm. Nope. See, I, when I put these together, I used to put them together in categories, but I decided not to so that we can jump around. Yeah. Almost, almost, you're, you're, you're warm. Like you don't do it the first time and you have to. Hmm, hmm, hmm. 
No. This is, this is, this is a rude retort for somebody who's stupid. Yeah. So stupid, they got to throw you back in the emu. <laughs> and leave you in a little bit more long to cook. Yeah, so you have to, so the, the, I think the Howley term is half-baked. Oh. Yeah? So, heho'olua <laughs> pika'o. Cha, kelele mai nei kapao'o. The pao'o fish is leap, leaping. There's two, there's two things for this. There's two mana'o for this. A jumper, what, what? Exactly. Yeah. The pao'o fish, if you go down to the tide pools, yeah, there's that long ding ding looking one. Yeah. And they're famous for going from tide pool to tide pool to tide pool to tide pool. So this is somebody who is promiscuous and more specifically a male. Yeah. Specifically a male. Specifically. Okay. But this also, and I, 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 you're not going to guess this one, but it's also when, you know when you have a, a young toddler, yeah, and this is a scolding thing for the mother, yeah, you know when, when the, the kid get hanabara coming down like this, and the thing just come out of that kind, and they go, <laughs> and the thing go back in, and then the thing come back down again, and they go, <laughs> and the thing go back in, that's that pao'o fish going in and out of their hole, <laughs> yeah, so that's what that is, okay? So when you see Hanabara coming down, the kids, the kind, that's the Tara to the Mara. Puha heva, this is kind of nice. Puha heva kahonu ikala makani. Yeah, the turtle breathes at the wrong moment on a windy day. This is very poetic. Yeah, what do you think this is saying? Choke. Hmm? Choke. Choke. Mm -mm. Wrong time. It's bad timing. Bad timing. What else? Mm, no. <laughs> it's like when you say the, the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. Um, for instance, you know, when I see a woman and even though she might look pregnant to me, I'll never say, oh, when? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you hop high. Yeah. Because I've been burned where there wasn't. <laughs> hop high. And so you feel real stupid, yeah, kind of thing. So unless I see the water break, I'm not going to ever say to a woman, are, are you expecting? I don't care. I'm not saying nothing. Yeah. So puha heva, it's just saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. Puha heva kahonu ikala makani. Okay. Okea pili mai. Sticky sand. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> hanger honors. Oh. Yeah, people who just hang around too much. Oh. Yeah, they're like sand stuck to your to your leg, and you gotta like scrub them off, and it's kind of actually irritating. Yeah, so it's not a nice thing. <clears throat> Aole i maneuiho ke kumu pepeau i kau himeni. Yeah, even the base of the ear is tickled by your singing. Yeah, in other words, what you're saying to me is not important. Yeah, it's not really about singing. Yeah, you're kind of like, shh, shut up. Yeah, yeah, don't say anything. Yeah, that's really what it is. <clears throat> Yeah, that's the cuttlefish. Hemu he'e. Yeah, somebody who's two faced. A cuttlefish. You find a lot of this reference in um, um, 19th century chant, especially. <clears throat> Kio. Duro. Hmm? This is, uh, yeah. this is when um, what you tell somebody as a retort when they keep asking you questions. Where are you going? Tio. Yeah, I want duru. What's it to you? 
Yeah. Yeah, and it's usually with a T. T-O. T-O. Yeah. Yeah, so if somebody keep asking, you know, where are you going? What are you doing? Where are you going? T-O. Kolea kawi a. T-O. Kolea kau a hua. A uli uli kau mauma ho i kahiki. Yeah, a plover that perches on the mound until the breast darkens and then returns to, to kahiki. Some of us might be familiar with this, that the, the, the imagery of the kolea being a foreigner that comes and eat, 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 take, 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 and then leave. Yeah, that's what a kolea is. Ilio pi alu kauka o hamaku aloa. Yeah, like a wrinkled dog is the upland, or a wrinkled dog is the upland of Hamakualoa. Oh, the young ones, they're good, they're on it. Yeah, he, he said somebody old, and exact, that's exactly what it is. You, this is a, a, a phrase making fun of somebody who's all wrinkled. Yeah, so whether they're kupuna or not, too bad. Yeah, like I said earlier, you know, as you saw the, the one before this, that was for an ali'i, and a high-ranking one at that. Yeah, so you have everybody is affected by hakukole. It doesn't matter who you are, what age you, what rank you, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Hau manu manu kaipu ino ino. An odd-shaped gourd makes an ugly container. This is, this is real obscure. <laughs> it's like the other one before. <laughs> this was uh, a scolding. Hmm? What? Oh, okay. This was a, a reminder and a, and a warning uh, admonition to a young mother who has a young child. Yeah. Saying that, you know, you have to take care of your child's body. You have to make sure that they conform to standards of society at that particular time, otherwise it's going to be an ugly gourd. Yeah. And so for us, you know, the, the practice of body molding was, and still is, practiced by some people today. You know, um, if you get upepe nose when you're born, then there's ways to help fix that upepe nose from a very young age. Yeah? You pull, you pinch, you pinch all over here. Because the body molding techniques work when they're very young, and as they're growing, they grow fast. And so you want longer limbs, stretch the limbs, yeah? You like make sure that um, for, the, for men, for the, for the boys, that you don't have a flat elemu, yeah? Because when you wear malo, look ugly, yeah? So there were techniques to keep that elemu nice and round, yeah, from birth. Um, had all kinds of body molding techniques, but this was part of that, yeah? Mold your gourd well, yeah? Otherwise ugly. What's the good of that octopus ink sack you've brought here? Yeah, it's uh, when a girl brings home a boyfriend. Yeah, and you don't like him. Yeah, because in, in aside from you know aside from certain kinds of real specific usages, the 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 sack is not valuable. Yeah, for those who do kappa and need dye, they use that for dye. You know, and I think some, some fishermen use that for bait, but you know, the ink sack is kind of useless. Yeah, so that's what that is about the kind. <coughs> about men. Ah, loa ala ya oi, loa akula ya oi na niu o kauna leva. Ah. Now all you have are the coconuts of Kaunaleva. <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> nope. No more poop inside. But good guesses. I li I'm liking. I'm like you guys. Think you guys. The blood stay going. The brain stay going. This is um, specifically for a male. Yeah. This is when you've lost everything. Yeah. So all you get left is your balls. Yeah, so you go Vegas and you lose your shirt. That's what you say. Yeah, to the guy. Ah, now all you have is your coconuts. 
and I didn't want to, for this one, I didn't want to uh, use somebody's picture who had, somebody who had an upepe nose. So I made my nose upepe, yeah. And so, flat nose, big dick. <laughs> yeah, this is, it, this is a retort when somebody teases you about something. So if somebody said, ah, upepe, upepe, your nose is flat, I can say, yeah, yeah, upepe, ma inui. <laughs> yeah? And that can apply, <laughs> that can apply to anything, yeah? Ah, you pupuka, ah, you pupuka, ah, pupuka, ma inui. <laughs> and I get, the one I get all the time, oh, you some pokole, are you? You know, most, most people don't think I'm this short. Yeah, this, if, they'll, if they've only ever seen me on TV or on whatever, you know, and stuff. And as soon as, as, soon as I walk in a room someplace or I'm walking past, I can, hello, I can hear you. They go, hey, that's Kili Rashala. Nah, it's too short. <laughs> Pokole, ma inui. <laughs> okay, so, uh, I would take a small break, but I think we're running behind, yeah. So <clears throat> I'm just going to barrel through some of these. There's a whole genre, and you know, all of that hakukole phrases that I brought up, you know, again, it's just to, it's a small drop in the bucket of these kinds of phrases and sayings. And I think that, you know, as, as more and more of the New Pepper Project starts to come in, I think we'll find more and more of them and more references to this kind of thing. Um, but there's also another subgenre of hakukole, and that's alina. And alina are geographical slurs. Yeah, all of us we proud of where we come from. If you're from Nanakuli, if you're from Wailuku, you know you're proud of where you come from. Yeah, and so oftentimes in Mele you have all of these positive sayings for that place. Yeah, Maui no kaoi. Um, mm, what else? Na hono wa opi ilani wake oahu. Honolulu no kabes, you know, other kind, you always have positive, yeah. Now just because you come from Honolulu doesn't mean that I like it, yeah. And so there's again that opposite action that occurs. And so uh, there was a committee that, that, um, that got together, I forget the exact date, it was in the late 1800s. And what they did was they, they studied and they gathered these. And so there's a whole document that you can find at the Vision Museum that has Alina. Interestingly, Oahu never have much. Yeah, there was only a handful. But Maui and Hawaii Island, chalk. Yeah, so I'm not sure why, but that's OK. <laughs> so I figured I would just add, since I'm on Oahu, yeah, so the alina is a scar or a blemish, scarred, disfigured, injured, maimed. Figuratively, it means low, disgraced, or dishonored, or, dis or degraded. Yeah, so this alina, I'll start off with Oahu since we're here. Yeah, this is a famous saying, yeah? Oahu maka eva eva, yeah? Oahu of indifferent or unconcerned eyes, and this was uttered by Hi'iaka, yeah? Um, after nobody would help her find, I think, Mankanu, I think to go someplace. Yeah, so Oahu maka eva eva. It's the only one I could find for Oahu, actually. There was like two more, but I couldn't, uh, it didn't come with any explanation. And, so, and a lot of the alina are very, very um, terse, you know. <clears throat> so koali is on Maui, yeah? He aloha no koali. Yeah, so this saying says, um, people from koali have, oops, Oh, no Oh well. People from Kowali have green scrotums. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why. Although I think that you know when you look at the the seeds, the seed packet of the Kowali, it kind of looks scrotumish, yeah, kind of sorta. It has like two and you know two. Honua <laughs> ula kuala olao. Yeah. Honua Ula, people from Honua Ula are callous backed. Yeah, and that's from all the hard work that they do. Yeah, but, you know, it's not a very nice thing to say. Oh, there. There a Kowali. Kowali Laho Mao Mao, Kowali Green Scrotum. 
Okay. Koki. Koki is right outside of Hamoa. Yeah, right on one side of Kaivi Opele. So when you when you coming when you're going past Hana, going towards um, uh, Kipohulu, go past Hana, and then you're gonna turn down to Hamoa. That hill is Kaivi Opele, where Oprah has her land. So then you go down, and right at the beach, that's called Koki. Yeah. So Koki people from Koki have sandy anuses. Oh, this one's mad. This one's bad. Keanai ai kikalo ki ona. Yeah. People from Keanai are eaters of duru taro. Yeah. Now, people from Keanai would never say that, but other people would. Yeah. <clears throat> Kula. People from Kula think that they can scale an octopus. Yeah. Because they're so stupid. Yeah, you give them an octopus and they're going to try to scale them. Okay. Um, we're actually getting towards the end of um, our, our talk a little bit. Um, before we move on to the next segment, which will be very brief, any questions, any observations about this particular genre of... To me, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I find this absolutely fascinating because it, it brings to light a certain thought process that our kupuna had that a lot of us never thought that they did. I mean, really, I, I never, you know, some of this stuff is, you know, I'm like, ooh, uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortable. But, yeah, they uttered it, they said it, so it's valuable to me. Yeah, so any questions? Any takain? Interesting how the younger ones caught quickly. <laughs> <coughs> Okay. Um, there, there was, um, I'm gonna move to the next one. There was a, um, a long story short, um, Kamakau and a genealogist from Maui got into a big fight over genealogy stuffs. Yeah, and uh, what happened was it, it was a 20, almost 20 year long fight um, that occurred in the newspapers between a genealogist named Unauna on Maui and Kamakau. Yeah, and so Kamakau was a hakukole er to the extreme. And because he had um, access to the papers more so than anybody else, you know, he was, he ruled, he really did. And so this is one of those that he kind of wrote um, because the newspapers became the new venue of oratory, yeah, uh, after a while, yeah. And so um, this is just one of those meles that he, he actually uh, published in uh, Nupepaku Okoa, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> and he is totally trashing Unauna. And so what happened was, long story short again, after about 15, 20 years of beefing back and forth, yeah, and Kamakau just ripping this guy to shreds like this. This is just one example. Um, Unauna died, and his son took up his fight and, and tried to you know, best Kamakau, but never happened. Kamakau was just too good. Yeah, and stuff. And so this is just one of those. Yeah, this is vish. This is vicious. Yeah, a deaf coconut for a head. you being slapped with the wicker basket of Malay. I don't know the reference to that, you know, but I like it. I like the imagery. I, I see some basket being whacked on your head. You know, I, I don't know why the wicker basket of Malay, but there must be a reason. Um, a deaf coconut for a head, a cuttlefish for eyes, ulcers for a neck, a stinging crack in a chest, and a boil for a belly button. Yeah. So all of these kinds of things, some of these came up, came up um, in the newspapers, yeah, so we can see these as they occur. And again, another one, a little piece of mele. And so he oftentimes, you know Kamakau, yeah? He would oftentimes um, preface stuff. He was a good storyteller. So he would preface any mele that he created. So this is one. So just like, so this isn't even the mele. This is just the preface to the mele. Yeah. Um, like the kawa slave whose forehead bears the tattoo, so this bit of mele gives you a slap. Yeah, and it's like, okay, too bad for you, old path of frustration. Oh, you dirty little dog. Oh, you despised outcast. 
you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is a Hakukole dream. <laughs> yeah, and there's, like I said, there's lots of examples of this. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, you. So people do it in English. People do it in English, and so, but we just never thought that our kupuna did him like in, in in poetic language. Yeah, it's like it's like um, poetry. A poetry. What do you call that? Poetry slam. Is that what it's called? Slam. It's like slam poetry, but vicious. Really vicious. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one is a famous, this is a famous hakukole. Yeah. And piuke ona, you know, kaulana mai ne o piuke ona la au he avale ana o e. This mele is vicious, vicious, vicious. And it sounds so pretty, you know, but it ain't. Yeah. So the story, and this, and the version that we know, and the version that I have here is not the original version. There's a much longer chant form version that has chalk verses. I don't know who took that chant and reconfigured it into a melekulo like this. But if you look at the, the original, it, is, it just goes on and on and vicious and you know. And so the story is <clears throat> that there was a half Mexican, half Hawaiian man living in Hilo and he had a girlfriend named Polani. And so, you know, all the girls was jealous because he was really handsome. And so they, they got a hold of him, the, all the girls in the, play, in, in the area, and said, you know, your girlfriend, she's talking stink about you. Yeah, she said that, you know, you're going half, you, you are, you, your, your banana is skinny, and that you're not very good in bed. And so like a dummy, he wouldn't believe. And he was an extraordinary hakumele. And so he...